Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mama Wears Athleisure. I am your host, Mariella de Santiago, a first time mom. We focus on all things mom with tips to help make life easier and more organized for all you mamas out there. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about torticollis and flathead, which seems to be a little bit of a common thing I find with infants. So we have Dr. Hope from Moving Munchkins, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you if you can start off with telling us a little bit about yourself and your business. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Hope. I am a doctor of physical therapy, and I work with infants and children in my practice. I have always worked in pediatrics. I used to do more sport-based return to sport assessments and things like that. And then I really found that I love working with the new postpartum family unit. And I began working with infants and younger children with complex medical diagnoses and just developmental delay, torticollis, plagiocephaly, which I know we'll get to pretty early on as a new grad about 10 years ago. And then I founded my practice in 2020, you know, the world shut down with COVID and I was like, I need to just kind of spread my wings and COVID kind of finally gave me that push to do my own thing. I had been working for a few private practices in San Diego and they were great. And I met so many colleagues and I learned so much from working with feeding therapists and speech therapists and all these other disciplines. So I really credit a lot of my approach and my knowledge to my colleagues that I've had before, but it was really COVID that gave me that push. Oh, I also had my daughter in 2018, but it really gave me that push to like, okay, you've got this, you can start your own practice. So I really specialize in infants and children under the age of five. And I treat torticollis, flathead, plagiocephaly, all those things every day in my practice. So I see it a lot. I've been treating it for 10 years. I really love what I do. I really, 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 really love educating families on ways that they can help their kiddos at home move better, feel better. I think most parents want the information. They want to help their child move and feel better. And sometimes the information that they look up or information that they get for other providers can be confusing. So I'm really passionate about education because I think with education, there's a lot that parents can feel less stressed about. And being a new parent is really hard (laughs) in itself. So if I can alleviate any of that stress that they're feeling, then I have met my goal for the day. And I guess we'll go on to the specifics of torticollis. (laughs) Yeah. So my son had torticollis and I didn't even know what that was. I just had noticed that he preferred one side when he was an infant. And I don't, I don't even remember what I did. Of course, here I went on Google and Googled things and then started to freak out about flathead and (laughs) you name it. So (laughs) let's start off with what is torticollis? Torticollis actually means like twisted neck. That's actually like what the translation is. So adults can actually have torticollis. If you've slept wrong and you wake up and you're like, oh, my neck, that's an acute torticollis. So it's not just with infants. When we talk about it with infants, the technical terminology would be congenital muscular, meaning the muscle torticollis, meaning that the origin is, or the the issue is within the muscle and congenital, meaning it's coming from birth in an infant. So when we talk about torticollis, what we're seeing with babies is that when they're in utero, they don't have much room in there. They're sometimes growing in a position that's in an asymmetrical position. The uterus is only big for so long when they get in the last trimester, they're kind of cramped in there. And then they come out however way they come out. And those muscles don't just work themselves out. They get really tight on one side. So torticollis, really the symptom that we see that pediatricians would refer to physical therapy or a parent like you might notice is that they might have like a persistent head tilt, like ear to shoulder, and or they have a preference for looking over one side. So it's multiple planes of movement where we notice that there's a preference or the baby is really tight. The way that torticollis is diagnosed, a physical therapist can diagnose it, a pediatrician can diagnose it. Sometimes the parents recognize it and they'll bring it up to the pediatrician. Sometimes the pediatrician sees it first. 
But what we really want to make sure is that we get the infant or the child in for the earliest intervention possible. So the second that you notice it is when you're calling and you're making those appointments. And with that, why would you want to do that, first of all? And is it linked to flathead? And if you could also explain yeah. what flathead is. When a baby's born, they're just cramped in utero. And when they come out, they will not move in a way that challenges any kind of tightness or tension they're feeling in their body. So what we know as physical therapists, it doesn't just stop at the neck. That's the sign or symptom that we see, but there's also tightness and postural asymmetries, some tightness in the hip or in the trunk or in the ribs, somewhere else in the body that's contributing to the baby's inability to have full mobility of their head and neck. When a baby doesn't have full mobility of their head or neck, they often will prefer one side, like you were saying with uh, your child, preferring one side. And when they go to sleep on their back, we put babies to sleep on their back with the swaddle. That's typically what most parents do. The AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics, has said that we need to put babies to sleep on their back. And that's to reduce the incidence of SIDS, which is sudden infant death. So we're putting all of our babies on their backs to sleep, but we're not really looking to see, oh, do they put their head to each direction and all, you know, can the baby sleep facing to the left or can the baby sleep facing to the right and straight up in neutral? We're not really paying attention to that. And then when the baby has a preference, they're just spending too much time on one side of their head. And what we know about babies' heads is they grow like pumpkins. So if you've ever been to a pumpkin patch, and you look at pumpkins and one is like really misshapen and it's like really flat on one side, you're like, whoa, you can kind of guess that pumpkin probably grew laying on its side. And the earth was pushing into the pumpkin and it was round everywhere else besides where it was touching the ground. So that's how babies' heads can get misshapen. They're like pumpkins where if they're only looking to their right side when they're sleeping, that right side is going to start flattening out. And then there's going to be other parts of the baby's head that become more round. And that's because the baby's skull and brain are growing at such a rapid pace that it's growing everywhere else. And then the flat spot is just, there's just too much pressure for it to counteract and, 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 and round out like where the majority of the pressure is. So it's really just a pressure issue at that point. But The bottom line is that the mobility needs to be treated, right? The lack of mobility needs to be treated. Sometimes I'll see that parents will post on some Facebook groups or ask around like, oh, my baby needs a helmet. He has a really flat head. Where could I go for the helmet? And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you treat the movement dysfunction first? Because that's what caused the flat head. So sometimes we'll see that the flat head is caused in utero. That's typically with multiple births, twins, triplets, because there's less room and maybe baby A is sitting on baby B's head and it causes it to be flat. So I have seen that for sure. But most of the time with a single birth, it's because there's some kind of tightness, muscular asymmetry, strength asymmetry that the baby is experiencing. And hence then the the head becomes flat with growth. So you did make a comment about coming in as early as possible and how some parents probably don't even notice that there is like a preference because we're not, one, we're not told to look for it. So two, we're not looking for it, right? We're so concerned about sleep. (laughs) But the only reason that I had caught it was because the preferred side that I like to lay my son when I was doing diaper changes or bath time. And I kept noticing that he was looking to the other side. So if he's looking away from us and I'm like, well, wait a minute, this isn't, I mean, he should be kind of wanting to look at us, or I know that he can turn his head because I'm nursing him on both sides, mm-hmm. those type of things. And that's why I had mentioned something after I did all of my fabulous Googling, which I do not recommend, but, (laughs) (laughs) and then yes, started to panic because then it was all of these results of like, you're going to have to get a helmet. You're You're going to have to do all these things. Yeah. Yes. And, and then of course you get the sales on like, oh, but get these fancy pillows and whatnot. Given that parents, hopefully will start to look for this if they are listening to this episode and are either 
first time parents or have a new one on the way, what are treatment options? Hi everyone, it's your host, Mariella. I wanted to thank you for listening and share some ways to show your continued support. You can rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, share the show with friends and family, buy me a coffee to help with the financial costs of running a podcast, follow me on Instagram at Mama Wears Athleisure, and finally, subscribe to my newsletter. Thank you for listening. Once you identify that there's some kind of preference, we don't need to be so scared and go down that Googling rabbit hole and think your child's going to get a helmet tomorrow. Helmets are cranial molding helmets, and they're not given until the child's at least four months old. So if you're noticing that there's a preference, there's a tilt preference for looking over one shoulder, there's definitely different providers that you can seek out for this. Typically, pediatric physical therapists are going to be more than well-equipped to care for an infant or child with torticollis or postural asymmetry, whatever phrasing you want to call it. So pediatric physical therapists, for sure, like I said, this is kind of our bread and butter. We treat this on a daily basis. So if it's a peds specialist in physical therapy, they'll know what to do. A lot of times parents will take their babies to chiropractors, which is great. Chiropractors do a great job at doing their gentle adjustments to improve the range of motion of the neck. Sometimes more intervention is needed just because chiropractors don't always address the strength and the milestone development, like rolling to both sides and those types of things. So a lot of times I work in tandem with a chiropractor. The baby will be seeing the chiropractor. They'll come see me. We'll work on rolling. The chiropractor's doing their adjustments, making sure everything is symmetrical in its mobility. And then I'm working on what I call the soft tissue, which is the muscles or the fascia and doing manual release techniques to improve the mobility. And then we're lo- working on the milestones. So really it's those two providers are probably the best to start with, whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you might already have a relationship with a physical therapist, or you might already have a relationship with the chiropractor that specializes in infants. So that would certainly be a good first stop. But again, some babies need more work than others. So some babies need both of us and some babies can do well and resolve the torticollis with just one provider. So it just kind of depends on the severity of the situation. But I would recommend to not wait for your pediatrician to recognize it. Ask your pediatrician, ask your family practice when you go in for that two-month checkup, that four-month checkup. What we're realizing a lot of times is if I'm waiting for a pediatrician to refer, the child's almost always at least four months. And in my head, I'm like, what happened to the last at least three months? Like this preference didn't start yesterday. It's been going on for the past probably four months since the baby exited the womb. So I'm really passionate about the earliest intervention. The research shows that the earlier the intervention, the less intervention is needed, meaning likely maybe no helmet or just less sessions in general. We're not working until the baby's walking age. Maybe we're only working for two months together, six sessions, you know? So The earlier that the child comes in, the less we have to reverse the asymmetry. So for example, like I gave that rolling example, when a baby's tighter on one side and they have a preference, they're either going to be delayed in rolling or they're going to have a favorite side to roll to and they can't roll to both sides. So that causes a cascade of asymmetrical milestones that that baby is achieving milestones, but not to both sides. They're not developing strength symmetrically. So let's picture that baby getting treatment right away at two months before rolling is even a milestone that's expected. Then when the baby starts rolling at four to five months, they're rolling both ways because their torticollis is already resolved versus that baby at four months oh, let's take the wait and see approach, just dangle a toy to the baby's side that they don't like, or they can't turn to just try some things at home for a few months. Then at six, seven months, you're looking at a baby that's sitting with their head tilted, or you're looking at that really flat head shape on one side, then we're looking at a helmet because we haven't managed the root cause of the flat head, we haven't managed the root cause of the poor posture now and sitting. So the earlier, the better. And hey, there's nothing wrong with taking your baby to a chiropractor or a physical therapist saying, is there some asymmetries going on? Are they, do they, am I seeing this correctly? Do they like to look to one side? 
do one to two sessions, get some treatment done. And sometimes that's all they need. It doesn't have to be the scary thing of, oh, I'm getting treatment for my child for several months on this one issue. It can be taken care of pretty easily if the child's really young. Yeah. And like when we took our son, we were kind of expecting to get a certain number of sessions. And Mm -hmm. in the end, we didn't need the full amount because he was making all that progress. But I was also doing the, I'm going to call it homework, the homework that I was essentially given to make sure that he was practicing at home. We had to switch the side that we prefer to do the diaper changes and do the bath time. You are changing some things at home, but the homework really is not that difficult to do. And it's a couple minutes a day, a few times throughout the day. And in the end, it was so nice to know that we went to our session and the PT was like, okay, that's it. I don't think you need to come back anymore. So let's (laughs) cancel the rent. Like that, that is so relieving as a parent. Yeah. Yeah. You're reducing that stress bubble, right? Yes. (laughs) In any way we can. (laughs) Yeah. And then just to know that it's like, okay, so my fear of like the helmet or the flathead or whatever, it's, it's gone. Like I did this, I caught it early on luckily, but it's just, yeah, just being more like aware of what is your baby preferring, which again, we don't get just a simple comment to us would be so helpful as new parents. Some ways you can detect it easily is in the car seat. They're in the car seat a lot. They're in the stroller. You're pushing them around. You're facing them. If your baby's always tilted ear to shoulder on one side in the car seat, that's a pretty easy sign to see. And if it's always the same side, now I will say when babies are really young under the age of two months, they don't have great head control. So they could probably tilt to either side in the car seat. So just look to see if it's the same side every time. Another big one, and I'm really passionate about this uh, because I'm a certified breastfeeding specialist is when a baby prefers one breast over the other. So that's a really common thing that you hear. And A lot of women, if their plan is to breastfeed, they start breastfeeding when that baby's born. (laughs) You're feeding your baby very frequently and a lot of repetition. So that can be something that parents don't always connect to a baby having some kind of postural asymmetry and or torticollis. So I'm really passionate about educating new moms if they are breastfeeding that, oh yeah, my baby's just having a really hard time on the right side, but the left side, they do great. Now, I will say working with the lactation consultant is super helpful because sometimes mom's breasts can be asymmetrical in shape, in anatomy, and then there can be some asymmetries with milk flow and milk injection. But a lot of the time what I'm seeing, because I'm seeing these babies with torticollis and I'm seeing them with flatheads, is that it completely correlates to mom saying, oh, it's really painful when I feed my baby on my right, but on my left, he does great it's correlated a hundred percent. So my belief is that feeding for the baby is a whole body experience. And if the baby's not symmetrical in mobility and symmetrical in strength, feeding will often be difficult or there'll be some asymmetries with feeding as well. And since we feed our babies from the moment that they're born, every two to three hours for several months, we can definitely start making those correlations that that's also something that parents can look for. And do you have any other tips, suggestions, or recommendations? Yeah, I think the biggest, like, I guess, issue that I hear is that parents will say things like, oh, my pediatrician said, let's wait and see. So that's like, it makes physical therapists cringe a little bit when we hear the wait and see, because even if that baby was able to suddenly wiggle itself out of these asymmetries or preferences, there's probably still some movement dysfunction that's going to happen. If there's asymmetries at birth, it's very rare that they just wiggle themselves out of it or it just resolves spontaneously. So my biggest recommendation for parents is pediatricians are very good intention, but they're also trained to refer when there's a very black and white issue. So they will wait until it is a very obvious issue to refer. 
If you need a referral, just push for it. Advocate for yourself. If your child is four weeks and you're noticing a side preference and your, your provider wants to wait and see, I would just push for it or go seek a therapist and you don't need a referral to see a physical therapist legally. If you want your insurance to cover it, you might need a referral based on your insurance, HMO, PPO, those types of things. But for the most part, you can go get an evaluation without a referral if you're concerned about your baby's head shape, if you're concerned about your baby's movement. So that's my biggest piece of advice is don't wait and see because it will likely lead to more sessions and more intervention later on. Thank you for all that. I appreciate you taking time, sharing your knowledge and helping us figure out how to avoid or detect any of the torticollis and flathead. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week for our next episode. You can find us on Instagram for more updates and tips. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts and give us a review if you like us.